We are live. Welcome to the Static Site Happy Hour, Static Site Chronicles, and Static Sites with Zach and Mike. <laughs> that, that almost rhymes. Mmm, true. That has oh, a nice a ring one. to it. Yeah. If, if, uh, uh, the third contender. <laughs> yeah. Our, our large audience has the say. Uh, whoever tells us first what it should be called is we're going to knock it in. <laughs> we're still waiting for one person. <laughs> A poll of one. Yeah. Yeah. I think Ricky posted, you told me Ricky had posted a uh, Mastodon post yesterday about it. And I think, yeah, they sort of straddled the line of posting both of them. So yeah, still have a clear their decisions. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Hey, Ricky. Ricky, what should we call this? <laughs> <laughs> Ricky gets to decide. <laughs> <laughs> all right so what we're gonna do today is um i like them all yeah maybe we call it that maybe we just call it all of them <laughs> yeah just rotate that's fine it yeah. won't be confusing mm. or yeah you're saying concatenate them all together into one super name yeah super you'll get the point statics chronicles is the shortest yeah that's the one that we can both remember consistently. So it might have to Yeah, be. there's something to that. <laughs> so what we're going to talk about today is, uh, I think we're really interested in, in pushing the perception of what is possible with static websites. Um, I think Eleventy does this well, where you can pull in all sorts of data from everywhere and have like, have quite a, dynamic build, but it's still a static site. I think page find does this well, where you can have search across even a very large site that is purely static. Um, we have another project called, um, flat Lake, which basically creates a, a fairly complex API out of your content files. So you can, query data and move data around um, through all these API imports, but there's no backend. It's just JSON files. So in that kind of vein, um, I've recently been trying to get more into just consistently reading uh, on the indie web and, and what other web developers are doing and, and getting into personal blogs. Um, so I was setting up an RSS reader and went through all the standard ones. I started, I, I've actually signed up for Feedly and have that set up, but I think there's a lot of room for improvement and, and it's trying to upsell me at every opportunity. <laughs> uh, I just want to read, I just want to read posts. I don't need AI. I don't need, uh, anything more than that really. <laughs> Yeah, it's so, funny when I joined uh, the stream today, the uh, the stream software requires Google Chrome and Chrome prompted me to try out their new AI oh, um, features that are built in. What, um, is it, what does that do? I don't know. I had just dismissed the prompt. <laughs> mm. I'm busy. I'm doing stuff. It's just yeah. like those modals that they pop up to upsell you to use different things. Yeah, interesting. Like you don't... You don't need to even, uh, it'll guess the URL for you that you're going to type in or guess your search query. <laughs> yeah, man, I feel like there have been some uses, I don't want to get too sidetracked, but some like very specific use cases of large language models that have been useful. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this sort of generic like Siri style use AI for everything seems very misguided to me. And I don't think that's where it will actually land. Yeah. Because it, I don't know if you remember, but like Microsoft edge had like a, their AI companion built in for a very long time. I think they called it Cortana or something. And that was mm. like part of the browser and you could use that to do various things. I don't know. I never really yeah. played around with it too much because I wasn't super interested in it, but yeah. Yeah. No, that's it. It's, I find it very useful for brainstorming, like for, for mm. trying to get further on an idea and like bounce back and forth, but for content generation, 
you just see so much garbage out there now. And I think that's where the, the indie web is like this uh, area of optimism on the web where like the, the content is not being created for some algorithm or mm. even for SEO really it's generated because this, the people really believe in what they're writing and want to share it with other people. And, and yeah, I think that's amazing. Genuinely useful content rather than algorithmically manipulated popularity contests. <laughs> that's it. So getting back to the RSS feed, um, yeah. So I was thinking of, of options. Like I just want something very minimal. Uh, and I want something that works on my desktop and uh, on my phone. And that's basically it, honestly. I just want to be able to read posts, that, that RSS feeds that I follow. And so then after last week's stream, I was talking to Zach and I was like, why don't we, like, could you, why don't we, um, could you build something uh, like a, just an 11 website that just is an RSS reader? Like there's no reason it needs to be private. If you do want it to be private, it could be behind like authentication, but 11 is actually an awesome base for an RSS reader. Um, so I've really been noodling on that idea the past week and I want to, sh I'll, I'll just share my screen. Where are we? So one, uh, yeah, Stephanie, it turns out Stephanie Eccles has already done this. Um, she did one, what, three years ago. Mm. And yeah, this is, this is it like super minimal. She puts in the feeds that she follows and she has like a really nice interface for, for looking at them. Um, so like, yeah, this is, this is awesome. Um, then I've been looking at different RSS reader, like designs to, to figure out like what's nice about them and what, what I feel like is just extra and unnecessary. Um, this is what I'm using at the moment, Feedly. And yeah, let's just talk UI for like a little bit. There's like, when I look at this, there's a lot here that I don't really know what it does and don't really want. Like I, I just want, I think the categories are good and being able to select an individual feed. Um, and then being able to see what I've read and what I haven't read. And mm -hmm. then basically just having a list of posts that I can click on one and, and, and read it. It's like, all this extra kind of cruft and suggestions and I don't even know what half these icons do. I just feel like a unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Yeah. There's a lot there. Um, I mean, yeah, I, there's so much extra that goes into this. I feel like, I feel like the other aspect of this too is um, that it, it almost reminds me of, um, the core indie web principle of like hosting your own content. And in many ways, I feel like having your personal feeds that you subscribe to is an interesting piece of content itself. I know I mentioned this to you last week, but I think one of the, the early things in my career that sort of got me started and really, I don't know, got me a lot of exposure back in the day was Paul Irish used to share his OPML, which is a, a file format for um, basically a, it's a list of RSS feeds and you can import and export them in a bunch of different RSS feeders. And yeah, I got my blog sort of on Paul Irish's like official feed list um, and got a ton of like thousands and thousands of RSS subscribers from that. Um, and it was, yeah, amazing. And that was sort of back in the Google reader heydays, but mm. so, and that was just like the lowest level thing of Paul was just like manually sharing this, like it's XML file basically of all yeah. of his RSS feeds, but how much nicer would it be to have your personalized feeds on your website that anybody could go and read 
And it wouldn't just be like this um, plain text XML, like very generic, unreadable code thing that people would, would look at. It would be like an interface, like more like this, where you would see the list of feeds um, and you can almost see it like evolve into like a social thing, right? Yeah. Where I could go to, I could, I could go to your feeds and then I could maybe click a couple buttons to subscribe to the ones that, that you subscribe to. And then it would show up on my personalized website. I really love that idea of having like a public, here's my public stream of things that I use personally, but I'm fine. Everyone with everyone having access to that too. I'm fine have, hosting that on my own website. I think that is an incredible idea. Yeah, um, I think I would be, I would be really interested to see. Okay, the people that I follow, who do they follow? And and it really does create this social network that feels a lot more genuine than um, any of the other social networks. Yeah, I wonder if we should shout out um, RSS is dead. I don't mm. remember that site. Um, I think it's RSS dash is dash dead dot LOL, maybe. I'll go to it so you don't have to go to it live on stream. Yeah, that's right. Um, no, it's, yeah, it's that, but that's the don domain name. The search term is RSS, or the domain name is RSS dash is dash dead dot LOL. And yeah, you basically put in your Mastodon handle and then it shows you the RSS feeds of all of your friends. And so you can see this is like one building block of this like social network built around RSS that I think is very interesting. Is that mine? We'll find out. I guess we'll find out. What's yours? Like... <laughs> Uh, you can just put Zach Lee at ZachLeet.com, I think should work. Yeah, that's what I should do. Hoping that works. And so, yeah, you can basically find RSS feeds in your social neighborhood. Mm, that's so cool. Which I think is an awesome idea. But this is like the step before the step that I want, right? Because I want, this is great. Don't get me wrong, this is great. But I also want to be able to, I'm not gonna like click through each one of these. Yeah. I feel like there's a missing UX piece of, you could almost very easily just make a selection, like a checkbox selection here, select all of the ones that you wanna subscribe to and then it would create an OPML file for you. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, because okay. yeah, I don't want to use all those URLs individually, but you can see like the relationship here between like the social networks that we already have and the content that people are publishing. There's like a huge, I feel like a huge disconnect. Yeah, because I have a ton of online friends. I don't know if I am subscribed to all of their feeds. Yeah, even though I would like to know that. It's possible there's like really great content coming up from someone and then you just, it's just like a black hole you're not aware of. Yeah, I almost want to subscribe to a person and not, uh, and that's really what the indie web kind of is. It's like people have their identity through their website. Mm. Um, It'd be awesome if this had an API. I don't, maybe that will come. Yeah, I think it's just a side project, so I don't know. Okay, so I want to get into some specking, but before we do, let's just go through the rest of these links. Um, I've been asking people what RSS reader they use. If uh, the author is, let's see what Bob's saying. The author is Paul Kuth. The OPML file feature has been requested by Mastodon. Oh, awesome. Yeah, mm. that's great. So, yeah, I've been asking people what RSS feeder they've been using. Anyone in the chat, if you have an RSS feeder you're particularly passionate uh, about, yeah, post it. Can to can to hear. Um, so this is Liam's Mini Flux. 
and he likes mm. this because it's open source and very very minimal mm. um, you can self-host it or i think you can pay like maybe 15 dollars a year or something for um for a hosted version hmm um, it has categories and then it was interesting. He was saying it, he reads everything on the site itself because, um, particularly with like more complex components and code blocks and things, sometimes the, um, yeah, RSS doesn't replicate that as well. Oh, it's I like, see. Yeah. M like missing some context. So yeah, he will just always go to the exact site. I feel like maybe uh, MDX has played a, a role in that too. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you get very dynamic content on your on your RSS feed. Mm. It becomes almost a security uh, line that needs to be drawn between what will be rendered in the RSS reader and what won't. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's another interesting point. I hadn't thought of that. Okay. Um, what was what do you use, Zach? I use Feedbin feedbinbin.com and I like it it's uh, yeah I think it's like $60 a year or $50 a year or something like that um, yeah super clean yeah. not really any cruft yeah it's nice what, what do you like about it and what do you not like about it Hmm. I mean, I think m maybe one of the coolest features that it has is um, like above a baseline reading experience is that it will show you updates as like a diff. So it will, if someone makes a change to their blog post, uh, then it will show like the red green diff right on the reading interface, which is, I don't know, kind of cool. Yeah, that is cool. I don't know if I've like used it to for any like super practical cool mm. like use case of like catching people updating things that they shouldn't have updated but yeah i think it's a cool like editing you can see it like in the same sphere of like twitter and the edit button um what they should have done maybe mm. uh yeah true but yeah nice yeah that's cool Bob says uh, inner reader. Let's have a look. I think I've had a look at this one. Yeah, look at that. The interface. Very similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the least favorite thing I have about Feedbin is that it's it almost uses that like material design uh, buttons at the bottom interface mm. like the primary navigation is in the bottom left and it's always confusing to me <laughs> like if you ever go to google docs and try to figure out how to create a new doc <laughs> it's yeah. always that like big plus in the bottom right corner yeah like the last place know. you look <laughs> it always takes me a couple extra seconds to find that it's mm. never where i want it to be and that's like not a that's not a design principle that has caught on. So I don't know why they've really dug in so deep on that. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder like, so I'm guessing this is add RSS feed. Mm -hmm. I wonder how you do it here. Like maybe somewhere up here or maybe this. I think there's add new at the bottom of that. Oh uh, yeah. There it yeah. is. Which that to me makes more sense. What do you think about this like three column? which I guess on mobile would kind of be shrunk down to one column um, versus two column. And maybe you click on that and it's full screen of the article. Yeah. I mean, Feedbin is the three column, right? I yeah. think I kind of feel like most of the posts that I view, or maybe I've configured my Feedbin to do this, but they don't show the, the image in the second column that's like mm. way too much clutter i yeah. would rather just see a list of yeah, titles yeah. there um but yeah i think you need you need that sort of uh higher or the chronological list of posts right yeah um whether it exists in the in the primary column or as a secondary column i don't know that doesn't really 
I, uh, I don't know. I almost, I almost go back to my Google Reader days where the two column was almost better. Mm. Um, yeah, I think just from a like thinking about building this as a purely static site, like I click on that and it's an entirely new page that um, just has that post. Whereas this one, you could, it's getting more and you basically have to do that third column as JavaScript, right? Like click on that and then go and fetch me the blog post and put it in the third column. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there's a, there's an interesting thing that you could do here and that you could have the, the second column be that sort of simplified chronological list. And then the third column could be like the actual, like an iframe of the actual site. Mm, yeah. Um, interesting. But I think maybe Feedbin all, allows you to switch back and forth. as like a toggle at the top, maybe. And it starts with the RSS uh, content and you can. Okay. I got to write this down because that is such a cool idea. So I was going to, I don't really know. I'm just going to start with this. Um, uh, so switch between like, uh, I don't know what to call it, like XML view versus web page view. I know what that means, but it could be worded a lot better. <laughs> yeah. And then there's th these, I guess I'm listing like f cool features or things to decide to column versus three column. I noticed you used the word switch there. We could talk about Apple's controversial new HTML edition <laughs> today. I, <laughs> I haven't actually seen switch. it. Switch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, tell, tell me more. Yeah, sorry. I'll just give you a super short version of it. It's uh, Safari 17.4 introduced this new attribute on the checkbox that's a switch. And uh, yeah, it makes it a uh, toggle instead of a, like an, a form input. Um, like an on and off toggle where it goes hmm. from like left to right and slides oh, back and forth. Oh, interesting. That's like the um, iOS version of a checkbox, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, apparently it didn't go through enough, uh, standardization and yeah, I think there's been some kerfuffle about the accessibility of it and mm. yeah, it's kind of maybe something that shipped a little too early. Interesting. So why would you use it outside of a form. Like it's basically has to be hooked in with JavaScript, right? I guess kind of like a button. Well, I think it functions the same as a checkbox. So it is a, it is oh, a checkbox. It's just changes the rendering of it, um, it to visually appear as a toggle. Interesting. And yeah, I think that's another accessibility controversy too. <laughs> it's just the idea of using, uh, because I remember working on an accessible toggle component, and I remember the original advice that I read on a bunch of accessibility sites was don't use a checkbox for this. <laughs> hmm. It's bad to use a checkbox for this functionality. So hmm. I don't know. It was a very interesting choice on their part to sort of ship this. I think uh, very controversial, too. Yeah, I think like for this, accessibility in general needs to be top of mind. Like it, this is about about connecting people through a social network. So as with any web project, but especially this one. Yeah. If you want to learn more about that, I would follow, um, Eric Bailey. Mm. He has some, some good insights on it. Just on the, on the Safari specific checkbox switch nice. fiasco. Yeah. I've heard that name quite a bit recently. Yeah, I think they worked on the accessibility project for a while. Hmm. Okay. So we have Ricky. Post Toggle here. Tussle. I like that. Switch <laughs> curf curf All right, let's see. Echo Reader. Guessing this one. Oh, speech recognition. Uh, no. that's not it. <laughs> I thought, when I saw that, I was like, oh, maybe it's, uh, it reads out your, 
your posts. Let's go Ikarita mm. RSS. Maybe no. All right, no Echo Reader. Reader app, I think I've heard of that one. Reader. Oh, Ricky says it's Echo Feed app. Uh, Echo Feed. Cross post to Mastodon. Oh, yeah, I've seen this. This is a. Uh... Yeah, cross posting functionality. Mm. Yeah, yeah this cool. is great. I, this is kind of that kind of reminds me of um, I've been doing a bunch of work with button down recently and for the Lebney conference and things like that. And they have like an, an RSS import feature. So it'll email out. You, you basically hook it up to a feed and it will email out that feeds contents when you do a new post to your subscribers. And yeah, I thought that was a super cool way to not have to draft content in their administrative interface too. Mm, Just another yes. side note. <laughs> Very cool. Thanks for the LMT meetup post, Ricky. Uh, link. Ricky's all over it. Okay, reader five. Oh, looks nice. We got a three column, pretty clean. Yeah, I remember using this one for a while. Um, and then I think I switched to Android and stopped using it. Um, and then I switched back to iPhone and never picked it up again. Mm. Yeah, interesting. I need a bigger, oh, yeah. So what do each of these buttons do? I have no idea what that does. That's like a favorite. I want to Yeah, the dot, the dot is a... Uh, red red indicator, I think. Uh, so if you yeah, want to yeah. mark it as unread, you can click that, and it will okay, yeah, BR. unfill that in. I, I have wanna, no idea what that I is. I want extra BRs in my content. <laughs> BR. Double spacing. <laughs> I don't know. Did this one, I want it left aligned. Now we're getting into the UX peril of using icons only for things. Yeah. I feel like that and comes then, and goes every, there's like, that's like a cyclical thing that happens. I like the like look of it where it's very minimal, but then like I, I should, like these ones are intuitive to me. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I guess that means refresh all of them. Definitely the plus. Mark all as red probably. Yeah. It's like just stretching me a little bit where I'm, I find myself have to like stop and really think about it. I remember reading a blog post years ago about this uh, software as a service company that would use labels for their initial onboarding. And then over time, as uh, folks uh, use yeah, the yeah. feature more and more, then it would remove the labels, which I thought was genius. Um, yeah. Because it yeah, awesome. simplifies your interface as you become a power user. Mm. Very clever. Okay, we'll do one more. Bionic reading. Oh, lucky we have the expert on RSS readers here. Ricky, you yeah, that's awesome. a lot of them. Oh, I can take that link down. Oh, maybe that's what BR means. Ah. Okay. Oh, I've seen this. Yeah, it's a way of highlighting the text to help you read faster. I've never seen this. So what, yeah. what is it highlighting exactly? I think just the first couple letters. But it seems kind of arbitrary. Like sometimes it's one. Is it the size of the word? Yeah, I think it probably depends on the word. Um, longer words maybe get more. Yeah, because facilitating had four. And what's the goal? Is it to read faster or? Yeah, I think so. More accurately. Very quick and easy. Have you seen the, um, I don't know what exactly the format is for this, but there's like a maybe TikTok or YouTube videos where they show you one word at a time instead of like scrollable text. Yeah. And you can yeah. read faster when it's rapid uh, firing yeah. words at you. Hmm. It's similar to that, but just for longer form things. 
Interesting. I'm also not... kind of reminds me of um, dyslexic fonts. Mm. I don't know if you've seen those too. Some interfaces will allow you to select a dys dyslexic friendly typeface. Yeah, I like that. Let's put that under accessibility. And fortunately, I don't know how to spell dyslexic. <laughs> D-Y-S. L-E-X-I-C. That's my guess. Dyslexic. Yeah. I think I'll know what that means. Uh, if you scroll down on reader sites, there's a higher dimension of reading with bionic reading. Your text with more focus, awareness, and sustainability. What is, hmm. I don't know what sustainability means there. Anyway, yeah. Probably re retention. Mm. Maybe. No, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping true. the content in your brain. It's not like a green. Yeah, not like a earth friendly thing. It's more of like a remembering things. Yeah, I had in our reader. Yeah, this. Okay. It's getting a little bit much for some of these for me. Okay. Yeah, I think I like the I like the um just the like Fabicon is nice because you mm. recognize where it's from, but yeah, I agree, like the image is it's just a lot if you're scrolling through. Yeah, ah this hmm, this has sparked something in me now. Okay. Because <laughs> I feel like the the unique thing that I would really love for this to do is for me, it always, it comes back to people. Like I almost want this to be like a social network replacement for me. Yeah. And I know this might not be what you want to build, but oh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Like Tell I would me. rather, <laughs> I want to subscribe to a person, you know, like I want my left column to be people. I don't want my left comment column to be, feeds i want the primary key to be hmm. I love that. A, a person and then i'll see the content that's coming from that person through whatever channels they want to publish yeah it's like way more human like, right rather yeah, than like that's i want really... to i want to subscribe to this particular xml format it's like i want to subscribe to this person <laughs> yeah and that's kind of was the trade-off originally in google reader is people would we're sort of struggling with, do I have one feed for all of these different things in my life? Am I, do people want to subscribe to me as a whole person or do I want to like publish individual feeds for my tech stuff and my sports stuff and my, I don't know, whatever other stuff that I have. And I don't know. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm more interested in making friends online than I am just like, consuming content about a certain topic mm. because when you subscribe to someone as like a, or when you try to, I don't know when, when I make a friend online, I, I want to know what they're interested in. Yeah. I want to know that person in their entirety. Mm. I don't just want to like, Oh, I only want you to publish tech content, like, or stay in your lane or whatever that kind of argument comes off. You often see that on social media when people get hit a certain level of fame, they'll start to get pushed back when they share personal things or, mm. yeah, people will start to say, hey, can you just share the stuff that I'm interested in? But yeah, yeah, that's know. the beauty of the indie web, right? Like, it's, it's like your space to share whatever you want to share yeah yeah and i i don't know i am i feel like i'm more interested in yes in in seeing the content that individuals publish mm. rather than subscribing to more corporate feeds so then like the idea of is the idea of categories useful under that context? Because it depends, like if you, it works for people, but let's say you are interested in TechCrunch or something, it doesn't yeah. fit into that model, but maybe right. that's f fine. Because like this is, this is more about social 
sort of things. And yeah, you could add TechCrunch in there uh, if you really wanted. Yeah, I mean, I think that the idea is, the, the essence of the idea is that I would subscribe to a single person's personal website and the feeds that they want to feed back into that I feel like could come from any number of sources and I don't know. I don't, mm, I don't know. Maybe I'm starting to doubt myself now because it feels almost like this already exists in a way, but nobody is doing it this way. You know what I mean? Like I, on my website, I have the feeds that I want to expose automatically to people. So you can just put my domain name into your feed reader and then it will show you the feeds that I have, but I don't really like publish um, everything in that way. So Ooh, I wonder if that follow feed actually works. I guess we didn't even talk about like the fire hose. I was going to talk about the fire hose, the 11 fire hose, mm. the activity feed plugin. Yeah, true. Um, so what's, what's the, is this like all your, everything on Mastodon? Yeah, maybe we should take a step back and just go to the 11 website. There's like a fire hose link at the top. Um, and this uses a, an 11 plugin called Activity Feed. And it will sort of, ag it will create an aggregate uh, list of content from a variety of different sources. You can click through to activity feed to see inf information about it, but you can kind of see the UI of it here. It's, it pulls in from our Mastodon account, our YouTube channel, our GitHub releases that we do, and our blog. And then we also have like a quick tips RSS feed mm. too. And puts it in all in one sort of big long stream. Mm. So folks can subscribe to that. This feed of sort of the fire hose of the 11 d verse, every official thing that comes in. Yeah, um, that's awesome. Eh? And it's because you like as an 11 t user, you might be like, you might just be unaware that all this content exists in these other places. And this is a roundup of everything. Right? Yeah, and this is all automatic. I don't have to uh, yeah, I don't have to publish any, I don't have to like wire up anything else. Mm. This is all just syndicating from various sources into one feed. So going, going back to this, like, let's say this was a person, would you want the ability to be able to select which of these or? Mm. I mean, I obviously would, right? Cause I put, I added filter functionality to this. <laughs> Yeah, hard for me to say no. Um, Cause I, but I think I, I think that the 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 I don't know the essence of the feature that I would get at if I was building a feed reader that was consuming something would be each one of these would be a feed that would show up under my name. Yeah. Um, so you are you like, can read that or not read that, and it doesn't like it just doesn't. Mm. So like you, Zach, are uh, exposing five feeds and then me, the person consuming the content, I could have one or all of those feeds I get to decide. Right. Yeah. And then you would get to pick. Yeah. Is it all RSS? Uh, no, not all of them. A lot or of Or like, them. is it you, Zach, like if you were implementing this? Do you run Firehose? Do you run the activity feed and then have an RSS feed of like Mastodon on your site? Or how would I get consume that? Yeah, I don't think that... I, yeah, I'm starting to doubt the the value of a Firehose feed because I do kind of feel like, I don't know, hmm... I don't know. <laughs> when I, whenever I say I don't know, that means it needs to be an option. <laughs> it needs to be an option, but yeah. Yeah, maybe it's like, because I think V1 is, is like the high quality 
content, which is basically the blog. It's put a lot of th- mm. had a lot of thought put into it, and then maybe there's an extension on it where you can list people's Mastodon or GitHub accounts, and it will just pull in the latest of whatever those are as well. So then at that point, it's not just RSS. I don't know how expensive that build is though. Like if you follow 20 people and now has to do like a (laughs) hundred queries to various APIs. Yeah. I mean, we do have the sort of caching functionality built in and I think that is how RSS feed, feed readers work. They do like ping these content providers because the, um, when you publish a post on your website, it doesn't like tell an RSS reader that it doesn't like ping the RSS reader that new content has been posted. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, it. That's that's the tension that we're managing here, right? Is that you wouldn't want to run this build uh, a prohibitively high number of times without an extra layer of caching, but mm. the caching is built into the activity feed plugin. So you get, you get to decide how often you want to actually ping these remote mm. sources. Um, and that's all part of the 11 D fetch stuff. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I feel like we're getting lost in the weeds here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's pull back to RSS for now. Um, but I think it, it is interesting, like just knowing, okay, what is what has Zach been doing the past week and just mm. being able to scroll through that. I feel like the other problem I'm really trying to solve that I have been struggling with for ever since basically I left Twitter, my personal account left Twitter, is that these social networks are so fragmented. Yeah. That people are I'm like cross posting to all of these places now. Mm. And not just that, but when I see friends content come in, I am way more likely to share it and boost it on um, Mastodon than I am on other networks. And what's the like social norm of that? If I see uh, that you got a new job and you posted about your new job online and I say, congratulations on Mastodon. And then I see the same post. I, this happened to me like last week. I saw the same post on LinkedIn later and I was like, uh, Okay, I'll post another comment. <laughs> it's like the yeah. same comment over again because that conversation now exists in two places. I don't know. Yeah, I it's strange. I really don't I, like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess, the, like, yeah, I don't know. This, you go in circles on that one. Um, yeah. Okay, so there's people you follow. Does it tell you... This idea of like unread posts is interesting because I think I like the idea of like dynamic progressive enhancement where it can just be a purely static site, but you also could bring in super base and you like you could log in and it would just keep track of what you've read. And that's basically Mm. it. Um, and anyone could log in and do that on your RSS reader if they wanted. Um, but that's nice because now I can be on my desktop, read a little bit, then switch to my phone, and it's basically kept where I'm up to and kept track. So you would have open registrations for anybody to... Yeah, it's a, I, I guess I, didn't, I don't see why not, but it is a little bit weird, like... I've got my RSS reader and Zach has a log into it, but like literally all it's doing is keeping track of red posts. So like, it's not like there's a security issue there. Yeah. That's wild. It kind of also reminds me of, uh, what if we had a cloud cannon RSS feed that sort of subscribed to our universe of things and anybody could log in and see the official cloud cannon streams. I don't know. That's like, there's a, some power there, but yeah, again, that's probably getting into the weeds. Yeah. Yeah. There's something there. I, eh? it's like, it almost like 
that step almost takes it into it's, it's never going to be reddit or dig or something but it it takes it somewhere there where you're starting to customize some feed of information because maybe you could like you could also add in i'm not interested in these people like i could i could filter on i could log into your rss reader and and filter some of them and i just trust that you as like a creator is um you're gonna keep adding interesting people and, and things to follow so i'm just gonna yeah, use your rss wild. reader <laughs> mm, that is wild because the the thing that that is is really jumping out me at me right now is bob's website Love mm. bundle yeah yeah and if that was sort of this curated RSS reader experience where Bob subscribed to feeds and almost was able to mark like highlighted feeds that he wanted to show publicly. Um, yeah, that I feel like there's a lot of overlap there because mm. then I could subscribe to all of the, if I wanted to see what was happening in the 11 verse, I go to 11 bundle.dev and look at Bob's feeds. Um, and he could almost like offer a curation experience too, or this comes yeah. down to like individual posts. This is an 11 post. I'm going to, the unauthenticated, unauthenticated experiences. I'm showing this, these official pieces of content that I've, that I've yeah curated and put together yeah. for public consumption. But, yeah, it's yeah, really man, interesting. There's a lot of like you almost really become like a like, get carried away here. <laughs> yeah, it's like almost like a news. It's like Bob's news website, and he, he yeah, could, he could have his own feed. He could be there's the fire hose, but then he has another feed that's like, oh, I'm going to highlight these five posts, and they're going like the the like big news feed or something. Yeah, I guess for me, it just, it still comes back to like the people. <laughs> it's all mm. just like trying to give attribution to people that are writing content for the community. Mm. Um, so like, let's get mm. a look at these again. Let's get a Liam's because I like, I like very minimal. Mm. It's this is like very Reddit to me. I'd like it the style to be a bit different, but I like I like the simplicity of it. Um, can I just copy that? Where's my like? So I click on Zach. And then I need to see a list of posts. Eleven T five point oh released. <laughs> <laughs> Immediate stress. <laughs> <laughs> so then the the like URL makes sense. Cause in Liam's use case he wants to be able to just click on that. He doesn't want to mm -hmm to open up and I guess that's like blue um, the time is useful I think you want to know how I'm just going to change it to black for now three days ago save I feel like probably uh, yeah maybe that's it oh, that looks weird and then the category, I don't know, maybe it can work without categories. If you're just following people, there's like the all feed and then you can click on an individual person. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, for an MVP, I think it should not have categories and mm -hmm. maybe we could see how far it goes. Yeah. But like I, f I feel 
feel like that. What have they got? Star Starred would be another interesting one. A progressive enhancement with dynamic. What does the star do? I guess is my question. Just I think it's just, that for later. Yeah, that's how I would use it. Then what do you do with it? Maybe it's like I. Uh, I really enjoyed this. So what are you? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's I I like like a bookmarking feature, and I would like to see what folks have bookmarked. Like maybe that's I don't know. On Mastodon, I do use bookmarks um, mm. to like look at things later that I don't have time to consume at that mm. moment. So I guess that is a useful feature. Yeah. And then favorite, I think, is maybe uh, that's a more public like a public like i don't i don't know what i was doing with my inflection there but some <laughs> yeah it's more of like a public bookmark mm. where you can go in and see someone else's things that they've favorited mm. which like if i was going to your rss reader it would be interesting both of those would be interesting like what have you bookmarked and or what have you favorited but yeah. I feel like that's getting in the weeds a bit. Like I'm going to your RSS feed read, RSS feed reader, and just feeling bad about myself because you didn't bookmark my post. Yeah, <laughs> there's suddenly a lot of social tension. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we've clicked on eleven T re released. I guess the heading can stay the same. This is wild, man. You could just add like. Uh, upvotes and downvotes for everyone, and then it would be hacker news. Yeah, <laughs> actually, like I think some some of those social elements are really interesting, though. Yeah, yeah, I think that that is really like for me. That's the core driving force of this whole thing is getting back to the Google Reader experience of having like people first content for me mm. when I was using Google reader, it was all of the feeds were centered around people. And it showed me like, here's what these people liked. Mm. Here's what this network of people that you already follow liked. Mm. And we've lost a lot of that. Yeah. To... Going, going back to this, like it'd be, it'd be really interesting. It, it, if you could hook into the API and, and say like, maybe there's a plus button and it's like find, find OSS feeds and it, it's doing a lot of the work for you. And then you could just click on it and it would add it. I don't really know if that, would, that's probably a future thing as well, but. I mean, you can kind of see the, the, how the pieces are wiring together, right? Because I could, subscribe to I, I can hit the plus button and put someone else's instance of this whatever this is mm. and then it would show me all of their feeds and i could click them um yeah and it would okay. show me the ones i'm already subscribed to and so what's the what's that format called uh are we o -P -M -L. okay so it needs to import like i should just I should be able to drop an OPMM file in. OPML. OPML file in. Yeah. But I think it also needs to export OPML. Yeah. Because, like, maybe there's just a, a like, button down here that's, like, Yeah, not a button. OPMM. Just, uh, well, I mean, it could be a button or a link. It would be a link to the existing URL that would always have your up-to-date OPML file exposed. That's just part of your build. That's just another file yeah. that builds. And your OPML is always publicly available. Is it a feed? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a, I, well, kind of, I mean, not really, I guess, but it's an XML file. Yeah. So even, like, I could, um, I could just have the OPMM file as my base, add a few extra RSS feeds, and now... And it will just combine all of that into a single OPML file. Yeah, OPML file. 
so how does that mechanic work of I go to your RSS reader and find someone I'm interested in reading? How do I, how am I able to just click that or get that into my RSS reader? Yeah, I mean, this is the, the Mastodon problem, right? Because when you are on someone else's instance and I want to follow somebody, um, I have to almost like, I don't know. Maybe how how do you do it? I like copy their your their profile page URL, yeah, and then like search for them on my own instance. Hmm. Um, yeah, and that mechanic is pretty terrible. It is. Um, I wish that was better. It is. It's. Yeah, I mean, with this import, like there's, like I could. I could also just point this at a URL and I'll build it like downloads your OPM, PMM file, sticks it in my one. <laughs> so, yeah. But that that's a like all or nothing kind of approach. Well, you wouldn't have to subscribe to everything. You could just show the OPML file and then pick which ones you wanted to subscribe to. Mm. Um. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine that you'd want to like do a union, a set set their union on two LPML files. That would be a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like just this is like that's the MVP, and from there, it'll be interesting seeing how people use it and a lot of these other like social decisions. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to explore. Yeah, I used to joke that with all the sort of runtime API services that 11D has now, where we almost have all of like the basic mechanics of building a social network. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, at least in terms of like displaying and previews of a remote URL and displaying the favicon for that URL and yeah, a lot of the social pieces. That's it. That's it. Yeah, it's just like bring that together. It's something that's open source and is high quality that people want to just deploy on their websites. Like if we could have a whole bunch of these, I think it'd be fascinating looking through everyone's different RSS reader. Yeah. It's like when you I mean, like is... when you log into someone else's Netflix account and it just feels <laughs> so different. <laughs> it's it's like uh you know, you realize how much the algorithm is just tuned to you. And it's kind of like your mm. own RSS reader. It's interesting taking a look at what someone else is into and what's, um, you know, what they've, what they've created, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very shocking. I used to read Reddit occasionally. And when you would go to Reddit unlogged in or your cookie would expire and it would look like, the normal interface it wouldn't really like what didn't jump out at you that you weren't logged in it was very jarring <laughs> yeah to see the generic one versus yeah. the customized one yeah well, that's it um yeah, this is kind of reminding me of tweetback a little bit i don't know if you know tweetback but that's like the twitter export tweet website Mac? tweet back uh back it was like a yeah that's it right there um, it was like an 11 starter project for Twitter exports. Oh, uh, nice. Um, you like iron all your content. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's, that's another interesting, like, it'd be interesting having a web representation of your Twitter or Mastodon. I mean, that's what this is, right? But it's like, yeah. it's constant. So you always yeah, and, are your content. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, this was one of the early, very impressive examples for me of page find. Mm. Because there's, if you go to my personal one, it has like 45,000 uh, tweets on it. So this is like a 46,000 page 11 build. So each one of these pages is a separate file. There's a separate tweet. And page find like cranks through it like it's no problem. Yeah. It's crazy. That's <laughs> it's just awesome, nuts. <laughs> That's yeah. 
There's some there's something around all these ideas. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of see like uh, I feel like I have been iterating on something in this sphere <laughs> yeah. for years and years and years because I've been chasing Google Reader basically. Like mm. that feeling of community that came online community that came with Google Reader was unmatched. Mm. Um, I think Mastodon is maybe getting there, but yeah, just unalgorithmically influenced online community. Yeah, we we're gonna wrap this up soon, but it like bringing in that social elements really interesting. Where it it would be cool for each post if you saw like. I don't know whether it's any conversation about it on like Mastodon or Twitter or conversations in your network that have happened about that article and then it would update. So now you have a social feed, but it's, which is shown on your RSS feeder, but it's not necessarily happening there. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of, cool social features that could be built into this that I think are missing. And that's, that's, I'm really just, I get super pumped up about sort of open format, social uh, features online. I think that almost all of our social network interactions right now are like closed garden or walled gardens, like closed off. Like how do, how does this company monetize our, uh ability to socialize online and yeah i don't know just even going through the 11 conference organizing i've been really thinking about um how to yeah maximize online interactions in a way that is accessible to the most number of people because if we had done an in-person 11 conference it just would not have been as accessible as an online conference and so i i understand that in-person conferences are great I love going to in-person conferences and seeing people face to face, but there's sort of an unmatched uh, level of accessibility that you can give to people in an online format and interacting with people online that, yeah, it's really changed my perspective on a lot of things. So yeah, I think the indie web needs to embrace this as much as possible for sure. Yeah. Exciting. Um, yeah. I'm planning to just have a one hour stream or, something each week where I'm just working on this tinkering away I think it'd be really cool to if whoever's interested to have a lot of input and watch me fumble around <laughs> trying to make yeah it. you should create a uh, github org for it yeah true. Um, and just work in public because that would be very cool yeah nice because yeah tweetback has a bunch of different like uh yeah, people that manage that org and yeah, I don't really participate in that project anymore. Mm. Yeah, really cool. It's got its own community around it. Yeah, kind of. All right, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Ricky and everyone else who was watching today. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, y'all. See ya.